Hello, welcome everyone to another capsule, International Relations Capsule for Shankar IAS Academy. Today we shall discuss the midterm US poll, which was held on 9th of November, but the results are not yet final. In fact, when we think of elections in the US, we are always perplexed by the fact that the oldest democracy in the world still cannot hold elections without problems. We are a much bigger country, much, much bigger uh, voters list, lists, but we have a uniform pattern for all the states. And uh, there is a very uh, efficient election commission and so on. So, so our results come out very fast and very few cases of dispute arise. And uh, mostly the judgment is immediately available and the government is formed in a few days. But this is not the case in the US. Firstly, because different states have different rules and regulations regarding elections. Ballot papers are very different. And the counting process, in spite of all the technology that they have, is done by hand in many cases, depending on from state to state. So even when there is a general election, there is some confusion as to where the results will be. And the last one, we all know how Mr. Trump claimed that Biden has stolen his election and uh, created such a havoc in the country and democracy itself was in danger the way he went about. And this happens even in midterm polls. You know, it's called midterm polls because these are held in the middle of the term of the president. Biden has just completed two years and he has two more years to go. And it is in the middle of the president's term uh, that elect some elections are held. What happens is the Congress members that the House of Representatives have only two year terms, but there is no limit to the number of times they can contest. But it means that they have to face an election every two years. The members of the Senate, on the other hand, face elections only every six years. They have six years term. But it is spaced in such a way that um, uh, many, uh, one third of the senators come up for elections every two years. So one third retires and the two thirds remain. And the next year, another one third retires. So what happens is for all the 435 seats of the Congress, which is the House of Representatives, uh, went to, went for elections. And uh, in the Senate, about 35 of them, one third of the Senate members were also up for election. So the results have come and the trends are quite visible. Uh, but still the final results may not come till the end of December or so. Because one Senate seat, uh, neither of the parties, neither of the candidates had a required number of seat, votes. And therefore it may, it's not decided yet, it may go for re-polling in December. So that means the result of the Senate, we will know only after that is over in Georgia. Uh, but the present situation is, of course, the Democrats are leading with uh, 50 seats in the Senate. There are 10, there are 100 seats in the Senate. They already have 50 and the Republicans have 49. So one seat pending. Uh, but the situation is such that uh, Democrats have already won the Senate uh, because they have 50 seats and uh, the vice president has a casting vote. So they will have, uh, Democrats will have a majority. It, they had a majority already of one seat, but now they have a more precarious majority having to use the vice president in the time of voting to cast a um, vote. So Senate, they already captured. This was not expected at all. There was considerable speculation that the Republicans were going to win the Senate and the Congress. And uh, Donald Trump, the former president, was leading the Republicans. And uh, he created the impression that they were winning. So Senate, they clearly won. Uh, but in the Congress, that is the House of Representatives, Democrats have 209 seats and the Republicans have 217 seats. Uh, which means that it is likely to be won by uh, the Republicans because they need only one more seat to get the majority. So while in the first term as president, President Biden had 
majority in the Senate and also majority in the Congress. And that is being upset now. Now he will be democratic, Senate will be democratic, but the House of Representatives will be Republican with a fairly four or five seats majority. And uh, this was most unexpected because there was this uh, speculation, in fact, prediction that it will be a red wave. You know, the Republicans are red color and Democrats are blue color. And uh, there will be a red wave this time. Uh, but that was proved wrong. And uh, Mr. Trump has been dis discredited because many of his candidates he put up for the midterm polls failed. Some of them were very famous characters, uh, in many ways distinguished, etc. But the people uh, turned against him in a sense. And that is why he could not get a majority in the Senate. The Congress majority will be there, but be rather small. So the negotiating capability of the Republicans uh, is less because, of course, president has to go to uh, the, the president ha has to go to the Congress for budget passing, so many resolutions to be passed, etc. So what they do is, if there is difference of opinion, they uh, negotiate and the concessions are made for the opposition, etc. That's how it works in the U.S. Congress. So this time. In the Congress, he will have a problem, but the Senate is more powerful because all the presidential appointments have to be uh, you know, supported by the, by the Senate, by a vote of majority. So he can appoint whoever he wants because the Senate will approve it. If the Senate majority was lost, then he would have been finding it, finding it difficult to appoint ambassadors or any other you know, positions in the, in the government. So that advantage he has. And also since the majority of the Republicans in the uh, Congress is likely to be small, we don't know the final results, likely to be small, uh, the difficulties that the president might have otherwise have in the US Congress will not be there. So Mr. Biden, in a sense, has won these elections uh, from expected failure. He actually won the elections. And um, he is very comfortable to go ahead. So President Trump's chances of becoming the Republican candidates has become less. But at the same time, he has already announced yesterday that he will uh, try to be the Republican candidate. But there is no great enthusiasm for him. There may be another Republican candidate may emerge any time. And President Biden, of course, has also indicated interest in a second term which is normally given to presidents. But in this particular case, uh, the problem is his health and also his uh, ability to withstand the pressures for two years and then another four years. I think it may be too difficult to expect because of his present uh, health is particularly not particularly good. And the Americans are very sensitive about the health of the president. Even if there is a an illness, they start worrying about what will happen if something happens to the president. And therefore, uh, it is possible that somebody from the Democratic Party might challenge him. But with this victory, he is likely to be the next candidate. And he could well be president if his health is uh, reasonable. So this was most unexpected. And therefore, the next two years, President Biden will have a, a very comfortable uh, performance, if he wants to give more money to the Ukrainians or do various things with NATO, etc., it will be easy for him to do it. And so he is on a, what we call a strong wicket in the next two years. And if he gets the uh, nomination of the Democratic Party, he may well be the next president. So this is the situation. So why did this happen? Normally, what happens is in the midterm polls, Presidents normally lose because uh, nobody would have risen to the expectation of the electorate. So in many cases, there are some yardsticks in which the presidents lose the majority in the Senate and the Congress. Like, for example, if unemployment rate is above 7%, history shows that the pres all those presidents in this situation lost the majority in the houses, in the Congress and the Senate. Um, similarly, there are other occasions when, for other reasons, uh, presidents do not get majority. But here, even though his uh, presidency over the last two years is not very 
uh, promising to some somewhat lackluster but still uh, he managed to get the elections through and so he should be happy so in a sense we can say that uh, uh, biden has won the election uh, but one thing is the georgia if there is in georgia if there is a uh, repeated poll and uh, the republicans win then there will be 50 50 and uh, still there will be no problem he will not lose the senate and congress is not likely to win so what are the reasons what are the reasons why he won or democrats won the general assessment is this was all because of the abortion law there were two uh, major uh, topics of discussion during the elections. Uh, one was the inflation. Inflation rate has reached about 7%, which is very serious for the economy. So people were blaming the president for it, and therefore there was a feeling that uh, he may not get sufficient number of seats in the uh, a Republic or the Senate. Senate, he already got it, and Republicans. And, and the second uh, issue was abortion. Because as you may remember, in 1973, there was a Supreme Court decision uh, which uh, gave the rights for women for abortion in certain circumstances. And that was just recently, the Supreme Court itself has overturned that. That um, it was a big surprise. And uh, the Supreme Court overturned it. And as a result, uh, abortion has become illegal. But it's not true that all of them have become illegal because, uh, you know, in the U.S., each state has uh, separate uh, regulations and rules. So the states themselves can legislate. And if they legislate in a particular way, the abortion rights will come back to the women in these regions. But Republicans have been opposing it. And therefore, since Republicans are not in favor of abortion and Democrats are in favor of abortion, apparently the vote went in the favor of Democrats. This is what one hears about the analysis. This might be true, because that's a sensitive matter in the United States. And um, there is general uh, preference uh, for abortion to be possible in any circumstances. That is what the Americans prefer. So according to all the estimates and uh, analyses which have appeared in the American press, uh, the inflation <coughs> issue was less important than the abortion issue, and therefore uh, the, Republic, uh, the Republicans have lost, and uh, President Biden has won the elections. Um, I already mentioned the consequences of it in the sense that uh, you know the president will be comfortable with both the houses, and that's good for him. The President Trump has lost his popularity as a result, but he is still a candidate, and as you know, when he started off. In his first election, he had not did not have even one percent support, and he won the elections. So anything can happen; any miracle can happen. Whether he'll become a candidate or not is a question. But he's the most visible Republican candidate. So, and uh, as far as uh, impact on the world is concerned, uh, President Biden has not had any remarkable success. He had uh, problems in Afghanistan, as we all know. Uh, then um, the visit of Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan did not help him in any way, necessarily provoke the Chinese. And the Chinese have now declared that whatever happens, they will go for uh, reunification of China, whether it be uh, peacefully or otherwise. So they say that we'll try to do it peacefully, but if that happens, uh, we will use force. What uh, Xi Jinping said was that we cannot rule out, or we can never promise that we will not use force. The sense that if it gets delayed beyond a point, America, China is willing to use force, which is a highly dangerous thing because the Americans are bound to support, and there could be a world war in case uh, China uh, takes Taiwan by force. But that's not, an, and the other complication there is that since China is now supporting Russia on, on uh, Ukraine, Russia is bound to support. Uh, China in the case of Taiwan, if there is a, is a conflict. So that's a very serious, uh, serious matter. Uh, other than that, uh, it, this will not make a big difference to the world that President Clinton, uh, Trump, uh, 
uh, President Biden is going to continue for another two years. And he may even win the elections next year, next uh, next term. Uh, but the present situation is is calm, and uh, there is no reason for anxiety. As far as India is concerned, uh, as you all know, it is the support for India is uh, bipartisan. Both the parties believe that uh, um, relationship with India is good. So there will be no difference really who is the president. But there has been differences. There have been differences in the past uh, because on certain issues, the situation becomes very sensitive. So in our case, it is a matter of the Quad as well as China, because Republicans are not uh, are the Democrats are more tolerant of China than Republicans. Like for example, when Ladakh, uh, the Chinese uh, incursion took place. We got very big support from President Trump. Of course, that's also because Mr. Um, our Prime Minister Modi had a good relationship with uh, with Trump. Of course, he has even had even better relationship with the Democrats when Obama was president. So it depends. But Republicans generally are opposed to the Chinese presence and the power. And they are inclined to support us. Not that they will come and fight the war for us, no. But we may get some support from in terms of intelligence, and we may also get some support uh, of arms being supplied to us, etc. Even in 1962, which of course, the war had ended when American supplies were sent into India. And there was nobody to use it because uh, we were completely shattered. So they have a tendency to support uh, anybody against, uh, against China. Uh, Republicans. And so, if there is a confrontation between China and India, uh, it is believed that the <coughs> Republicans will maybe of greater support to us <coughs> so, than the Democrats. So that is one angle we have to think of. But otherwise, normally, India, it will not make any difference to India-US relations. And uh, things will go smoothly. Because depending on priorities and so on, and what issues come up? Because last two years we had all the issues like the pandemic, the war, economic crisis, all kinds of things happened. And so we should be prepared for another table in term, two years for President Biden and how he performs and how he health performs. All this will be factors in determining uh, what will happen to India US relations in the next uh, two years. But there is no particular concern about this. Of course, uh, the Kamala Harris is waiting in the wings if something happens to the president. Uh, but uh, that's something which nobody can predict. So as before, uh, the US uh, situation will remain very active and attract uh, turbulent. Uh, but the one sad thing about it all is that uh, the United States has not yet mastered conducting of elections peacefully and dis and also declaring results. That is very sad for a democracy. With all our inefficiency and lack of technology, we do a better job than elections, than the American elections. That's something of great comfort to us. <laughs> uh, but certainly, the democratic process will succeed. There have been cases where the presidents were nominated by the Supreme Court because nobody could know how people voted and there was confusion. So it is a classic case of that. And that continues. And uh, therefore, the results will not be available till the end of December, uh, when the Senate may have another runoff voting, as they call it. Because if uh, neither of the candidates has a clear majority, then they have to go for another poll. And that will be known only at the end of December. But uh, it's very clear that the Democrats have the Senate and the Republicans have the Congress, and the uh, Democrats have the president, and so they have a, an upper hand in the politics in the United States. So thank you very much. If there are questions, I shall try to answer. Thank you. Uh, this is a legitimate question. But we don't know. The answer is we don't know. Uh, because naturally, 
the president will try his best to improve the economic condition of the US. But there are so many imponderables. I don't know, we don't know how long the Russia Ukraine war will last. And, uh, and that is a question which nobody can answer, not even President Putin. So the economic situation may continue to be uh, precarious. Inflation rate may go up. Price of oil has already gone up. And supply of oil from Russia may not be available for Europe. So there's a thorough turbulence in the economic field, like almost like 2008. You know, the world has just recovered from that. And then another thing may follow. And as far as India is concerned, of course, whatever happens in the United States will have its impact on the whole world, particularly India, for good or for bad, it will have implications for us. So how it's going to affect us will depend on our own policies. The trade agreement has not uh, come into being. There are other issues. And um, these are all to be discussed. Uh, the, the trade uh, facts are being discussed by the two sides. And um, let's hope that even if there is a, a big issue in the uh, United States, India will be able to manage as we did in 2008. In fact, in 2008, it was Dr. Manmohan Singh who showed the way to the world how to overcome that. So that's why uh, Mr. Obama used to call Manmohan Singh my guru in economics. And that is what led to the G20, which, uh, which we are going to be chairman. So there are very many interesting things happening. So, but we don't, we can't predict what the situation will be as of now. Yes, these are all unknown questions. Um, the Republican Party is divided. We all know. In fact. Um, Donald Trump came into that as a candidate, as a usurper. He was not expected to be the candidate at all. But he manipulated his way all the way up. So it is not impossible that he may do that again. Uh, whether he got the support of the Russians or not, that was the allegation against him. Uh, but uh, there is no uh, guarantee that the Republican voice will be united. As for that matter, even democratic positions may not be united for. But that is a democracy. And uh, let the best man win. That's all that we can wish. And who the best man is, the people of America will say. I wish I was an astrologer. Nobody else can answer that question. Um, of course, people are doing things very fast in order to deal with this a difficult situation. Um, the Europeans have said that they have no objection to other people buying Russian oil, provided the prices are, are kept at a, a minimum. So sanctions will continue if the war goes on. It will get even more aggressive. And uh, therefore, uh, every country will be affected in the world. Our Prime Minister at G20 meeting today spoke about uh, poverty, and, uh, you know, uh, lack of I mean, shortage of food. He said that now it is shortage of uh, fertilizers, but it will result in the shortage of food. And it will be a, a big challenge. So what has happened to, what's going to happen in Europe in the winter? Because now they are talking about the few, next winter rather than this one. Because this one, there is really no hope of resolving it. So that is where it is. Well, depending on the question that they ask, there can be a question relating to the midterm polls and uh, the chances of the future. There could be. Uh, then a particular question as to what are the factors which uh, resulted in the success for the Democrats. And that you know, the main factor is supposed to be the abortion law, which was overturned by the Supreme Court. So this will be uh, any one of these questions uh, on cameras.
Why do you want to do that? We can do anything. We can ban anything. It's possible. But we will not do anything against uh, the right to information, the right to the freedom for uh, expression. And all these reflected in the Twitter, in Twitter, as in other social media. And uh, they cannot, you, no government can suffocate the people. But the person who is suffocating the people happens to be the richest man in the world. And he buys the highest Twitter of four billion dollars or whatever. And then he is silent, silencing it in various ways. It's very, very strange that this is happening. But I see no reason for Twitter to be banned in India. We have taken actions against them and Facebook, etc., for not observing the rules in India. And we are in touch with them. We find them sometimes. But I see no possibility of any of these social media being banned in India. Yes, uh, this is more or less known, but there is really no evidence. You know, the impeachment case came up and it lost. So there is no evidence to show that Russians, uh, uh, but there were indications. That Russia, I don't know whether they publicly acknowledged it, uh, but um, there is some concern that this happened. So the people will try to not to, or that not to happen. Russia has already been uh, <clears throat> told about the undesirability of intervention. And that doesn't prevent them from intervening if they think put, uh, Trump would be a better choice or whatever. And uh, now technology has developed to such an extent that uh, these things are possible. And uh, we cannot really, uh, but if they support Trump again, if Trump becomes the candidate, <laughs> And he wins, there will be other consequences. So this is all a matter of uh, speculation at the moment. There have been some uh, reports that uh, the Americans are talking to Iran. Because when it comes to oil diplomacy, uh, those who have the oil matter. Others do not matter. Ideologies do not matter. So they will do whatever they can is possible. So the uh, President Biden had gone to Saudi Arabia to persuade them to reduce production so that um, uh, price remains uh, steady. But Saudi Arabia had refused to do that. But now it appears that uh, OPEC is lowering its production, which may be helpful. And uh, other countries like Iran and Venezuela are in sanction, actually. And um, we, we can't say how it will evolve. I'm sure everybody will talk to everybody else when it comes to existence and poverty and uh, all of the problems. Uh, this is um, uh, not anything is anything is possible. Any new arrangement is possible. Yeah. It was in 1973 that uh, abortion became legal in the U.S. Uh, but in the U.S., the system is that whatever rules are framed for the country as a whole need not necessarily apply to all the states because the states have uh, flexibility in developing their own regulations. So this was suddenly struck off by the Supreme Court in 2002. So, the Supreme Court reversed the judgment of 1973. And there was a lot of uh, questions and complaints and agitations and so on. And now it has happened that the Democrats support abortion while, sorry, Republicans support abortion while Democrats oppose it for various reasons, religions, health, and various other reasons. So, it looks, it appears as though Republicans would have otherwise won lost because the people believed in the democratic policy of being open to abortion rather than. So they put it as a the most important issue in the election. So whether it was inflation or controlled or not, uh, they wanted that this issue should be 
are sold for the interest of the people. And so, if Republicans uh, come back to power, uh, that will uh, create more problems uh, for, for the people. And therefore, they are forced. And that is the reason why the Democrats got more votes. But these things keep changing in the U.S. Abortion, same-sex marriage, uh, all kinds of things are under discussion. And sometimes very surprising decisions are taken. The Supreme Court reversing this itself was a big surprise. Uh, but this is how the United States works and legislation works. Because it is not the majority party which is ruling. Then it's easier. Because in Indian parliament, the government does not have to struggle. Because uh, the majority party can pass any legislation. But in the US, it is not that. That's because the president is in a particular party. He cannot get anything done in the, in the Congress. The Congress majority matters. The debate matters. The relationship with the president, with the um, with the legislators will matter. And the final, final uh, compromise are made in the middle of the night. Sometimes the governments get closed down for several days because the parliament cannot agree. So such things happen. It is strange, but uh, democracy, when it is very strong, such things uh, uh, will happen. They are appointed by the uh, president, and then they have to get the approval of the of the Senate. That's how it is. There's no collegium. The president can appoint anyone he wants. And uh, the record of the uh, judges in question, and that is what is examined. How has he voted on certain issues? All these are debated. And, uh, and then only they will get support. There have been rejection by the Senate of judges appointed by presidents. So president and the Senate are the only, only factors in this. And if Senate majority is there for the president, his nominations will go through. Okay then, thank you very much. See you again, bye-bye.